How does this stuff taste like? Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. This is awful. This is going to be the terrible experience. <laughs> All right, today on How to Drink, it's the all-new vodka game. It's a wheel of vodkas, and it's a skull of classic vodka cocktails. Put them together, and what have you got? A very bad time. We've been thinking about, like, what can we do with flavored vodka? Like, just standing around sipping flavored vodka seems stupid. So we had this other idea. We got 13 of them, 12 of them. We got a number of flavored vodkas. I got this wheel at Ikea. I've been sitting on this thing forever. I figured we'd do something with it at some point. Meredith put the names of flavored vodkas on the wheels. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin the wheel and I'm gonna pull a drink. And we got classic vodka cocktails in there. I'm gonna make the classic vodka cocktail with this vodka instead of the, you know, the, the regular plain vodka it should, it should go with. And then I'll review that drink. We're just gonna do wheel skull episodes. That's what we'll call this, the wheel and the skull. Welcome. Welcome, mortals, to the wheel and the sky. What's more fun? Is it going to be like, hey, we got to make a classic? No, it's more fun to do this first and then find out what I got to make with it. That's more fun. I think it's more fun to know what the cocktail is and start imagining what nasty thing you could pair with milk and... I don't think so. I think it's more fun to do this first. All right, Watch. Watch. I'll watch. Don't believe me. Just watch. In the words of... Bruno Mars. Yeah, Bruno Mars, in the words of Bruno Mars, the immortal words of Bruno Mars. <laughs> All right, let's spin the wheel of flavored vodkas. Natural light strawberry lemonade. Where is that? Oh yeah, baby. That's our contestant. Natural light strawberry lemonade. What a way to start the show. Fuck. Okay, and I've got to make a Bloody Mary. A Bloody Mary with natural light strawberry lemonade. That actually may not be, that might not be, it might not be good. <laughs> so here we go. I'm going to take a little lemon juice, like very little lemon juice. Like, that's good. It's not really rocket science kind of cocktail. Uh, a couple dashes of Tabasco. I want a couple of dashes of Worcestershire. I haven't opened this one yet. I love Worcestershire, by the way. Worcestershire sauce is, uh, I think, really important in my house and kitchen. Any kind of like an alternative burger that you want to make better, throw a little Worcestershire on there. It's amazing. It just, it, it does a wonderful things to those. Where's my horseradish? Here we go. Some horseradish. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kalmatures Cal horseradish. I think that horseradish, horseradish, horse, horseradish. Horseradish. I can't say it right. Horseradish. Horse radish. I think a little horseradish is the most important ingredient in one of these. I don't need a ton of it. Yeah, that's quite a bit actually. The tip of a bar spoon, you know. I want uh, four ounces of my tomato juice. Big old can of the stuff right here. Two ounces of apparently natural light pink lemonade vodka. I don't. You know, the one thing is that this drink, the Bloody Mary might be cheating because like with the horseradish and everything, can you even taste what we're doing with the vodka? Crack some ice. Whoa. Now, one thing about a Bloody Mary that I've gotten wrong in the past, you can't really shake a Bloody Mary because uh, the tomato freezes. You just kind of, you have to roll it. And... That is really cold already. I've got my big old mug. Put my Bloody Mary in there. Throw a uh, celery stick in there. I, I think you have to cut the base off of these to do what you were trying to do there. <laughs> <laughs> get our celery with some leaves on it right that's like generally the look a little salt and pepper let's get a little black pepper boom a lot of people like celery salt on this drink i don't know i don't think it's really necessary okay here we go this is a uh goddamn natural light bloody mary here we go that is fine that's just a bloody mary i don't taste this at all i really don't i just taste that's a good bloody mary a bloody mary works without vodka that's the thing, like it tastes like a Bloody Mary whether you put the vodka in there or not. This is just a nice, hot, spicy glass of tomato juice. I like this a lot. I kind of wish I didn't have vodka in it because I would just drink it. I would bet you could put any vodka you want in a Bloody Mary. The one thing I was gonna say is like, I, I'm sorry, this is kind of a letdown. The product is not a letdown. This is an insane, this is, a, this is crazy. This is just crazy that this exists. Man, I kind of forgot I like these, these are good. I kind of want another celery. I want some celery here. I don't know. Oh, that's good. All right, four more. We're going to make the next one right after this. 
All right, next drink. We're back. Let's spin the wheel. Blueberry? It's a blueberry dirty martini. Oh, good <laughs> Lord. Western Sun Piney Woods Blueberry Flavored Vodka. What does this stuff taste like? The end result, by the way, is that it's vaguely grayish blue in color, which is not appetizing. Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. Oh God, it smells like dirty laundry. What the fuck? Oh, fucking hell. This is awful. This is gonna be a terrible experience. Does it taste like blueberry at all? Just sweet, blueberry, nasty. I usually stir a martini, but a dirty martini, which I also don't like, that's a thing that you, you, you shake that. So we're gonna throw a little uh, olive juice in here. And these are tipsy blue cheese olives. <laughs> Because Meredith said that's what they they got to use. Well, yeah, these. do dirtier than that. Really? I don't know how you make a blueberry of dirty martini. I've never really. I like. I like. I, see. I like a briny martini. So just a little. There you go. I'll, I'll accept that. It's pretty. That's pretty filthy. They're good though, right? No, no. I like these olives. Every dirty martini I had when I was younger in Chicago mm -hmm. had blue cheese olives. Nowhere else in the country does this, from what I can tell. Yeah, they're fine. Blue cheese olives. The only other alternative is like a pimento olive, but... Pimentos are, are normal too, yeah. but like blue cheese is very common. And like I've asked bartenders here, they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm going three ounces of blueberry vodka. A uh, half an ounce of um, vermouth. <laughs> it's a Chicago style uh, dirty martini. Blueberry vodka and uh, uh, the blue cheese olives. Oh, you could call it a blue martini. Oh, Jesus Christ. That combination of fuck all. Holy God damn. That's not good. That's not good. I, I really, sometimes I wish you could smell what I smell on the show. Because that, uh, there's like times in life when you just got to like, you have like huge emotional barriers to like getting a thing done. The first time you jump out of a plane, like every part of your body is telling you don't do that. And you just got to shut your brain off and go. Right? You gotta do it, you don't have a choice. There's a lot of stuff I smell on this show that I don't want to drink. Like in a very like survival instinct, fight or flight kind of way. And you just gotta shut it off and get it down, man. This is one of them. Good Lord. Oh, wow. <laughs> That ranks. That ranks is one of the worst things I've had on the show. It's so sweet. It's so sweet and blueberry, but like, ooh, man. If you really stop and think about what a blueberry tastes like, I don't know, like eating blueberries don't ever taste like a blueberry flavored anything. So I wanna be clear, it tastes like blueberry flavor. It doesn't taste like blueberries, it tastes like blueberry flavor, like blueberry jam, blueberry candy, blueberry, Something, some kind of an interpretation of a blueberry thing. Meredith is just like guzzling expensive mezcal back here. Just in case anybody wants to know what Meredith is doing behind the camera. <laughs> she is within arm's reach of all of the how to drink spirits and she reaches for them. Uh, <laughs> occasionally. Occasionally. <laughs> so it's, it is very sweet, very blueberry, but also very, very oily, very, very briny and salty, sweet and salty. Two flavors that you don't like together. It has a, uh, oh God, oh God. It is a new kind of bad. It's a new kind of bad. I don't know what the, ooh, bad, it's bad. Oh, I don't know what, to, I don't know, I don't know. It doesn't taste pukey. It does smell pukey, but it doesn't taste pukey, but it does taste like something that'll make you puke, but it doesn't taste like puke. These are two flavors that just do it. They don't, they don't belong together. Bad things, bad, bad glass. Uh, we're gonna move on to the next spin of the wheel here on help. Let's spin the wheel, bust the deal. You bust, bust the deal, face the wheel. Bison grass, <laughs> by bison, bison grass vodka. Now it says this is a Bison grass 
flavored vodka. The thing of that is that I have never had bison grass. I don't know what bison grass tastes like. There's a piece of grass floating. Oh, I, I see that. There is a physical piece of grass in here. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's weird. Okay, listen, I've raised children. This tastes like the way a fresh pack of diapers smells. And it tastes like Pampers. Like, what is this product for? For people who like bison grass, Meredith. And a Moscow mule. So this is another one where I actually think that it won't matter. I don't think we're gonna taste it, so. But we'll try it. Uh, build this one in the glass for sure. Just gonna crack an ice cube right in there. We need a little bit of lime juice. Really just like literally a quarter of lime squeezed in there is what you kind of want, right? Two ounces of your bison grass vodka. Bison grass, where are you from? I mean, it's, it's, it's the bison grass from the heart of Biat Suisse Forest inspired Zubraka. The unique vodka with a soft, smooth, and aromatic character. It is unique. Just equal parts. This might actually be good. To be perfectly honest, this might be good. Yeah, not good. It's not good. It, no, no. Good is not the word I would use to describe that. It weird. It just tastes weird. Not bad, not like, not, not, it's not good. Terrible? I wouldn't say it's like the worst, it's not the worst thing I've ever, it's slightly worse than neutral. It's a Greg like bad -o meter. Yeah, right, so this is bad over here. <laughs> and like, this is like, boy, I don't even know what that is. It's just dead center neutral. It's like, mm, right there. You know, slightly worse than neutral. Maybe it's Play-Doh-y? play doh -y might be the, the word to describe that. Plasticky? Uh, the, the ginger does a lot to cover up the weirdness of this particular flavored vodka, but it is um, not enough. It's not enough. It's just not enough. Let's just let's just move it along. Let's not waste any more time with this drink. Here's the merit of tasting. Boop. I think that's worse than the other one. Worse than which other one? Than the vodka? Mm -hmm. Than the, the martini? I don't like. I don't like the smell of fresh cut grass. So the taste of it is. So you interpreted very... that as tasting like fresh cut grass. Well, grass, not fresh cut, but. Grass. I don't. Hold on. Let me show you. I don't think it tastes like grass. I don't know what it tastes like. <laughs> Look at her face! I really don't like that. Nobody likes it. Like maybe someone made that to go into like a bloody mirror. I don't understand that. It's a mysterious, it's a mysterious thing. That, that's terrible. That it was is... an upsetting face. You were upset looking. <laughs> yeah. Well, up next on how to drink another spin of the wheel. <laughs> going into a Cosmo. Uh, I gotta say, that's probably gonna be fine. This could be a genuinely good drink. I want a quarter ounce of lime juice, and I got this half of lime right here. I need an ounce of cranberry juice, which you just can't beat the original, it says right on there. I, I need a half an ounce of triple sec. This is the Luxardo's version. Luxardo, by the way, is a brand. A lot of people use Luxardo to mean maraschino. This is not maraschino flavored triple sec. It's just triple sec. And I need one and a half ounces of my apricot vodka. So you normally make this drink with a Citrone vodka. I genuinely think this is gonna be fine. All right, so that's that. We shake the cube, crack cube. Strain that right into our glass. Beautiful color, flame our orange. Okay, and there is an apricot Cosmo. I quite like that. I like that a lot. That tastes like a Cosmo, but with like a little less tart and a little bit more stone fruit. I don't know. Hell, you could call it a stone fruit Cosmo. People would love it. You know what you could do? You could spin the wheel again for Cosmo and see if this is just a drink that adapts really well to different flavored vodkas. The answer, by the way, is no, but let's do it anyway. <laughs> huh. All right. One and a half ounces of Van Gogh double espresso. This will be terrible. This will not be good. You know, Mary, you might be onto something. Maybe this will be good. It's the cranberry juice that really is going to make or break it. I, I agree with that statement. Looks kind of like a Trinidad Sour. Oh, fuck you. It's an espresso Cosmo. Yeah, that is remarkably good. It's, it's weird, but honestly, it's fine. The thing is, is that tart and coffee go together much better than you think. Maybe a Cosmo is a drink you just can't break. I think you could make a better Cosmo. I don't think that, you know what I mean? Like, they're not all perfect Cosmos. Apricot's good. The apricot is good, right? I like that a lot. Right, yeah, so the coffee works too. Yeah, I mean, they're just fresh and good. It's also the only drink that I'm like, 
I get the vodka, the unique vodka flavors in both of those. For sure, they, the, the vodka you're using makes a big difference. Up next on How to Drink, another spin of the wheel! Mango, pineapple, white Russian. Oh no. There's no chance that's gonna be any good. <laughs> this is a suitably cursed combo. This could end up tasting like a milkshake, like a like a strawberry shake. You understand that coffee is a huge component yeah, here. Yeah, but it's Kahlua. Like, you don't really taste coffee. What? Have you ever drank Kahlua? It's coffee ice cream at, at worst. Come up here and have some Kahlua for me. Tell me. <laughs> okay, I'm, I, maybe I'm maybe I'm thinking of like maybe I think Kahlua and Bailey's are too closely related. Oh no, they're not related. One ounce of Kahlua for the for the glass. Here, why don't you have a little sip of Kahlua? Try that. Okay, I stand corrected. It's coffee syrup. That's it's, what it is. Yes, it's very sweet coffee. You're right. Two ounces of Svedka mango pineapple. The mango pineapple white Russian might turn out to be like a real classic. People are like, oh no, that's genius. That's so good. <laughs> you want to take an ounce of heavy cream and float it, really. Now, I've heard people say that you're supposed to stir it in. I've heard people say you're not supposed to stir it in. I think that probably the truth is you're supposed to stir it roughly. You're not really supposed to stir it in, but you just give it like a spin, you know? So it's combined, but like kind of a disaster. Here we go. One mango pineapple white Russian. All right, listen, hear me out. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> this is significantly better than I would have imagined. <laughs> A moment, please. I have to, cl I have to collect myself, hold on. I, I don't know how to process this experience I'm having right now. Do I like this better than a regular white Russian? Probably not. The thing is that in this context, the Kahlua ends up tasting not so much like coffee, but like chocolate. And so it just tastes like a chocolate mango pineapple. Chocolate goes with mango and pineapple. If you were imagining yourself at a fondue party and there were bits of mango and pineapple to dip into some chocolate, a chocolate fountain, if you will, that's what this would taste like. And it's like, it's fine. It's very sweet. It is absolutely alcoholic candy, but this is not bad. <laughs> Do you know what this means, Meredith? This is not the episode I thought we were shooting. I am now forced to admit, since most of these were okay, except for the dirty martini. And the bison grass. Oh, and the bison grass. But I have to admit, flavored vodka is pretty good. <laughs> this is my villain origin story. <laughs> this is how, if Greg was the Joker, this would be the backstory. He's like, one time, my producer had this crazy idea. She was a boozer. She drank, <laughs> she drank Ms. Cal behind the camera. And she said, spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. And I went crazy. <laughs> Try it. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's very sweet. It's dessert. It's a milkshake. It's 100%. A milkshake, yeah. But it's not a bad. It's, there's no clash of flavors here. The flavors actually complement each other shockingly well. I, sus I suspect that. Damn you, Svenka Mango Pineapple. I'm forced to admit that you're good. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I think that like with vodka, anything sweet is going to taste good in like, this is a milkshake. Yeah. I want someone out there to put a mango, pineapple, white Russian on their menu. <laughs> I want you to talk a customer into buying it. I want to see it. I want to hear, I want in the comments, I want to hear about it happening. Oh, I, I, I want it to be on your menus at your wedding. <laughs> I want it, we have, we got a tray of mango, pineapple, white Russians for everybody to pull from. And uh, your upscale bars, your real fancy pants joints. So I want to hear about mango, pineapple, white Russians taking the world by storm. Meredith, did we learn anything today? I think I, I think I have. No. <laughs> I don't think we learned a goddamn thing. In all seriousness, though, I don't want to cut you off again. I won't cut you off again. Did we learn something today, Meredith? No, I mean, I have been curious about the wall of vodka. Flavored, the flavored vodka. vodkas. Like, someone is buying it and using it for something. Yeah. So I feel like we've explored some of that, maybe. Yeah, I think that they're just adding it to seltzer. Probably. I think that's all they're doing with flavored vodka. Look, we've opened up the world of, of cocktails that people can make with flavored vodka now. We've done a service. Add, add some new cocktails to my skull and maybe we'll do another one of these uh, flavored vodka episodes.
In the meantime, you will find me on the social media places now appearing before your lovely eyes. Where I'm on Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, Instagram, uh, uh did I, the Patreon! The Patreon, of course. And, uh, and also I've been making the show forever. The internet, I, I was born on the internet. So I have, I think over, over 1,000 episodes of How to Drink at this point. <laughs> Um, 1,727 episodes. So if you haven't seen 1,720 episodes of Had a Drink, there's probably one you missed. Check it out. It's one of these four right here. Woo! All right, I'll see you guys soon on another episode of Had a Drink, where I will not be drinking a uh, pineapple mango white Russian. But honestly, if I had to, it wouldn't be the worst.